Hi everyone, today we're going to have a quick discussion about whether you actually need a good GPU to use Blender or to make the most out of it. And you might be surprised to find that a lot of professionals don't actually use the highest end GPUs and that actually, maybe controversially, spending all your money on the most powerful GPUs going might not actually help you to render things faster in Blender. But there are a lot of caveats to that and it's just something I wanted to make you aware of. Now before we get into it, I want to let you know this video is sponsored by one of you, a member of our community. Today we have Rico, who has created a bunch of QOL tools, quality of life tools. These are a variety of add-ons for Blender. I will talk a bit more about it later on, uh, but they're super good. I actually think a lot of these should probably be inbuilt features in Blender because they are really well designed. But anyway, thank you, Rico. I like picking up members of our community for sponsors. It just feels a bit nicer and more appropriate. But anyway, let's talk about GPUs. I was inspired to do this little discussion because last month, Gleb Alexandrov on Twitter, Gleb Alexandrov is a well-known member of the Blender community, asked which GPU people have. And surprisingly, a lot of people seem to be using RTX 2080 Ti's. And it got me thinking, wouldn't a lot of Blender professionals be spending all their cash on like the chunkiest 40 series cards going? And then the more I thought about it and I talked to some other friends, no, but it depends what you're using Blender for. Now, let me tell you about a saying that we have. Work expands to fill the space allocated for it. So what that might mean in your everyday life is if you have a lot of free time going, you're eventually going to fill it with junk to do. Likewise, if you have a lot of rendering power available, you're going to very easily fill it with junk to render. Now, this is the subjective side of using Blender. Objectively, better GPUs, higher cost GPUs with more teraflops, more rendering capability, are going to render things faster and help you get better results, right? Any idiot can argue objectively Objectivity, but subjectivity, how it actually feels to use Blender, is something that I think gets overlooked because it's not very obvious. Now about filling rendering power with junk, what I mean is, say you have a lovely art scene, you got some volumetrics going, you got some procedural materials, you got some shader-based displacement happening. With regular or lower end cards, you tend to pick up on optimization issues relatively quickly because you can feel, again kind of subjectively, when you're using Blender, that the performance is starting to chug earlier in your process. You may be aware that by sliding the volume density level in your world shader settings higher that everything begins to slow down so you leave it at a lower value. You might notice that when you're making procedural materials you may have a detail level for a procedural texture that you're cramming really high but noticing that it's not actually making a difference visually because at the scale that you're perceiving the material that extra computation isn't required. So you go oh okay I actually didn't really need it that high and then you bring it back down to a suitable level for the scene. Likewise if you're doing this tessellation or we call it adaptive subdivision, but you're creating geometry on surfaces with materials, for example like a boot print in the snow or dirt coming up from the surface which you control in the shaders, then you might leave the subdivision levels too high, meaning that you're generating way more geometry than you actually need to achieve the visual result. So these are performance drain areas, things which you could easily skip over if there wasn't an obvious performance drain. So when I talk about work expanding to fill the rendering capabilities available, if you have less experience with Blender or if you're just lazy with the values, whether intentionally or not. That additional rendering capability that you're going to pick up from a really high-end GPU may just be filled with junk that you may not even realize. Hopefully this is making sense. Again, I will say because people argue about GPUs all the time, like we said, objectively in a straight line race, in a controlled environment where the values are the same, where you've finished your scene, you're ready to render, high-end GPU, bigger budget is going to give you everything you wanted. You're going to be pumping out frames faster. But if you're just a casual artist sitting down, making something for the fun of it, maybe for your social media. If you spent the majority of your budget on a really high-end GPU, you may not be aware that you're not making the most out of it and that your experience might actually be almost the same or even identical on a cheaper card if you had been a bit less lazy with the values. Hopefully that's making a bit of sense. Now you might say, okay, well, even if you're lazy with values on the high end, there will be a difference in the visual result because being able to pump out a higher volume density, for example, or more lights in the scene or more samples for rendering in your viewport will make it look better. And yes, that's true. But again, not every value contributes a better visual result. There are so many different considerations. It all comes back to this really annoying answer, which is it depends on what you're making. Not every 3D scene is equal and they will have different requirements. Not every scene is going to require shader-based adaptive subdivision. Some scenes are going to require a lot of VRAM, some scenes won't. But one thing I do think is a really important thing to think about when you're choosing which GPU to buy is which GPU will give me access to GPU acceleration features. So on my main computer here, I have a 2080 Ti. I have a backup computer, which I'm not using 
using yet. I got it from Nvidia during an old sponsorship with them. That computer has a 3090. I still haven't even started using it, even though it's more powerful. The reason I'm still using the 2080 Ti, even as a YouTube personality in the community and someone who makes products, is because A, it gives me access to all of the optics GPU acceleration features, meaning that I can get faster rendering capabilities and denoising. That's already a big jump up from not having access from earlier generation cards. And B, not using the most powerful GPU in the room, literally, forces me to keep on my toes slightly when I'm making products for other people in the community. I want to have some limitations for optimization for testing. It's kind of like how game development companies should test their games on lower end machines, even though obviously uh, there seems to be a bit of slacking in that regard in the game industry recently. I've just started playing Jedi Survivor, one critical crash so far, and on the laptop back there, I have a 3070 Ti mobile. So what I'll say to you is, as kind of the bottom line of this, is if you're looking to build a computer or buy a computer, think about what you want to do with Blender. If you don't know what you want to do with Blender, if you're just, if you want to learn it, if you want to just make fun stuff, fun artwork, get like an all-round experience, I would say, instead of thinking about it as designing a computer for Blender, instead, just make a gaming PC. Now, the reason I say that is because gaming PCs are generally quite balanced in terms of components. Decently good CPU, decently good RAM, and a pretty good GPU. In Blender, most of the software is actually CPU based, which is something that may seem a bit counterintuitive because it's a graphic software. You'd think that it all runs on the GPU. It doesn't. Blender is more like a canvas or a quilt, I suppose, of many different patchwork tools which run on different components and also different code bases. So for example, a lot of features run on Python code, which is slower than C code or C++, but Python also kind of compiles down into a binary thing. This is technical stuff. Python is what you use for add-ons, like extension features for Blender. But the code you're running will run at different speeds, but this typically runs on the CPU. And some tasks are then offloaded to the GPU, which again, depending on the task, get to run on acceleration features. Basically, there's this whole net of different areas where different processes are being run. It's not all just a GPU exercise. So what I'm saying is, if you invested your entire budget for the computer on to the chunkiest GPU going, you may have a terrible experience with Blender if you then went for the cheapest CPU going, the lowest amount of RAM you could find, and a shockingly archaic hard drive that's struggling to load in a quarter of a billion vertices. But again, if you understand Blender, if you understand the values, you have a very controlled creation environment, and you just want to make the most out of the renderer, you want to pump out more frames faster, then yes, it is definitely worth investing the money into higher end GPUs. I probably wouldn't go right to the top because again it kind of feels like you're getting diminishing returns for rendering performance compared to the cost of the GPUs which is probably why a lot of professionals sensibly don't go for the highest range highest price GPU they know they can pump a lot of performance out of lower levels but if you find in the end the you have this really nicely balanced device to run Blender on but you end up with a project where you want to pump out more rendering time then there are alternatives available like render farms there are a lot of render farms available oh my god as a YouTuber in this space. We get like requests from render farms all the time. Hey, we'll give your community free credits. Just give us advertisement. Ooh, there's a lot of them. But there are also more community centric ones as well, like Sheep It, if that's still around. It was kind of about like trading processing power for credits to run your renders. They effectively run on other people's machines. But anyway, I don't want to drag this on for too long. I just wanted to make you aware if you're like new and coming into the space, if you have a budget to build a computer, just think twice before spending 90% of it on the GPU. Try to be a bit more balanced and considerate about giving some of that value to the other components which are going to help you have a better subjective experience using Blender which will also help you to utilize it for the most number of projects. You want to aim to have a good CPU for Blender, you want to aim to have a relatively decent amount of RAM and VRAM, VRAM on the GPU, but that depends on the type of project you're doing. Ideally you want to get a GPU which does make use of acceleration features which you can find in Edit, Preferences, System. Nvidia is typically the most feature rich. Again this video isn't sponsored by by Nvidia, it's sponsored by Rico, but that's my recommendation. I tend to stick with Nvidia cards just as a matter of personal preference. I like the optics feature set, very good, very fast, good denoising as well, but there are different ways of doing denoising in Blender. Also, another note to make is that you might also think that having a super powerful CPU and a super powerful GPU combined improve your rendering times, but again, there are caveats. There's this little phenomenon in Blender where running the GPU and CPU to render the 3D viewport or just a final render at the same time can actually slow down your rendering process. I'm not technically informed on exactly why that is. I have a theory, it might be wrong. Something about passing of tasks between the two, but I noticed that when doing tiled rendering,
rendering, where you're rendering the frame in different tiles. If you're using both the CPU and GPU, I think it only gave the tile to one or the other, rather than rendering the tile with both. Therefore, when you got to like the end of a render, there may be like one tile remaining that's just taking ages. So the GPU could do like that, but that tile's been allocated to the CPU, so instead you're just waiting for it to finish while the GPU's doing nothing. That might not be how it works, but that's what it felt like. And there's like a whole series of threads where people discuss like the actual reasons why. But basically, running a CPU and a GPU at the same time doesn't necessarily speed up your rendering time. So power plus power doesn't necessarily equal speed. It's not what you have, it's how you use it. I typically only do my rendering on the GPU. But again, depends on your project, what type of scene you're doing, how you use Blender. There's a lot of it depends. But anyway, hopefully you found this interesting. And maybe it just gives you another angle to think about components and power when looking at 3D rendering. We've spoken a lot about subjective experience, but again, in an objective race between two GPUs, which is a controlled environment, the scene is exactly the same, a higher end GPU will render frames faster, but your experience between the two might not be as drastically different as you expect if you're lazy with how you use Blender. But if you are a Blender user already, you know what could also speed up how you use Blender? Do you see where I'm going with this? Quality of life tools, yes, add-ons. I make my own, you probably use some if you're a Blender user because Blender has a very vibrant add-on culture. In Blender, there's actually quite a lot of room for improvement in terms of interface and usability features. So I highly recommend taking a look at the Cubo L add-ons available. They are very affordable, only a few dollars, covering a range of different things. They're letting you to see data about your scene, modify data about the scene as well. There's a really nice one relating to materials that I like. Let me take a quick look here, the material panel. So you know how in Blender you have to like click the drop down for the material list and then scroll through and find the material. This one adds a new panel where you can quickly apply materials to whatever you have selected and manage the fake users all from an end panel, which is really nice, feels a bit more creative. It's very easy to purge them as well so you don't have to go to the cleanup menu. Wow, what else have we got? Camera bookmarks. You can bookmark settings for your cameras. That's really cool. I need that. It's got a lovely bookmark button as well. So you can quickly like reset the camera to your different settings, ring array tools, grid cutting, selecting the same size, distance measuring. I quite like the look of this one as well. I've seen this. So you can see the distances between objects. That'd be pretty cool for like arc viz. You can show simultaneous distances between different axes. That's very handy. You see, like I said, these are the kinds of things which you look at and you think that should just be in Blender. Um, but one of the really important things to know about these quality of life tools is the Rico is providing them all in one big package with everything added for free as well. So if you pay the $20 to get the single user license, you have access to every quality of life add-on they've made, including all the ones being added in the future as well. That to me is super worth it. And I know you probably think I'm just saying that because it's a sponsorship, but if you've been around for a while, you see me talk about a lot of add-ons and also make my own. There is a lot to work with here. I think if I took the distances add-on and the advanced material panel add-on together, that alone would probably be worth about $20. So getting everything together is really generous. So yeah, thank you so much for sponsoring this video, Rico. I hope you're doing well. And if you watching have made it this far through the video, then put, what should we do? Some kind of tool emoji in the comments. If you put that in the comments, I'll be able to see which of you did make it this far. Show me who you are. Prove it. It's the highlight of my day whenever I release a video. I love seeing your familiar faces. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more Blender videos, CG related news and inspiration. But more importantly, just have a great day and I will see you next time.